Cities Skylines 2 is just around the corner. But how much of the game can I show you in 30 minutes? That is a question I plan on answering today as we get to work on a cozy little mountain village. And much like the first game before it, we begin with a single road. And what I'm going to do with this road is bring it right up this way towards this train track, because at some point, at some point today, I would love to get a little train station along here and connect my cozy little mountain village to the train line and have people coming and going via train. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a relatively basic layout for a relatively basic town. Obviously, we have a lot of residential demand. We are going to have commercial and we are going to have industrial. So my goal here is going to be to create something that's a little bit more dense down towards the train track itself, because I think that's going to look pretty good once we start connecting everything around. And we can just go ahead and sweep a road the entire way across there. It gives us a bunch of little squares, which I know isn't the most exciting thing in the world. And then when we get to this side of things, we can get a little bit more creative. We'll go a little bit back here. We'll come across like this and we'll not bother filling in every single gap. So the block's going to be a little bit bigger on this side of things. We'll go like so. We'll go like so. And we'll leave that one for now. And then on this side, exactly the same story. We'll come down like this. And that's probably going to be enough to give us a good little bit of starter zoning. So we'll go ahead and start laying some stuff in here shortly. But first, we do need some industry and we need power and we need water. We do have a little bit of a problem because the winds are blowing towards where I want my people to be. So my industry is going to be better down here for the time being, I think, because it means that the pollution is going to blow out of the current tile. It's going to blow away from where the people are going to be living. So let's get ourselves a little section of road. We'll go just like so. We'll bring this out. Let's see. Let's go 336 meters to about there. And we're just going to build ourselves a relatively basic industrial setup. It's not going to be super creative because I'm probably going to move this. I'm probably going to demolish it. So 336 that way. We want to go 224 this way. And we want to go about 336 that way. The reason I'm using those measurements, by the way, is because if we go from here to here, you'll notice the two inner rings that kind of make a... Well, it kind of looks like a butt. Uh, it's 112 meters. And if you go 112 meters, you can come down like this and it perfectly lines up the six by six grids. So obviously multiples of that, 224, 336, 448. That's why we're using those numbers to measure out this space. Because if I've done it properly, I should be able to get a road right down in here and it fits absolutely perfectly, which it does. And then a little something, something that I can do is actually take this underground power connection and bring it straight up this way. And we're absolutely going to do that. I would like it to be in a nice straight line, though, not the way I did it right there. So we're going to continue it straight up here. We're going to continue it straight up to these power lines right at the edge of the city. And the reason we're doing this, if it's going to let me, which it absolutely is, is because we can export excess power. So that's a way that we can make money from this coal power plant assuming that's a thing we need to do. We also need to get water and we need to get sewage. So let's do both of those. Oh, and would you look at that? Just as we place our sewage outflow pipe, we have unlocked milestone one. We are now a tiny village, which is great. We don't have anyone living here, but we're a tiny village. I'll absolutely take it. Let's take a look at the progression panel and see where we are. So we got some money. We got some development points. We got some expansion permits, which is fantastic. It means we can get three new tiles and we got some healthcare and some garbage management. So let's go ahead and get this sewage outflow pipe just connected. I've put it right down here. The water flows from right to left here. So it's flowing away from my water pumping station. We'll just connect that right there. And so sewage and water and power have all been sorted out. And I guess we should probably take a look at where we're going to build this landfill site. Now, this thing is kind of huge. I'm also going to turn off the overlay. It's huge and pollutes a lot. So what I might be inclined to do is use these unlocked map tiles and just buy this space here. And that's hopefully going to give me a little bit more uh, capability when it comes to building my landfill. But we're going to wait. I'm not building it just yet. We have some other things that we need to do. Obviously, we have demand for housing still. We are losing money because no one's living here. But I'm still I'm still not quite there yet. There's a little bit more that I want to do just before 
we go ahead and build things. And specifically, it's just bringing a road off of here at a bit of an angle. The only reason I really want to do this is just so this doesn't look like a complete, you know, grid, which is what it is. But, you know, I, I want it to look like it's not just a complete grid. And honestly, let's get rid of this guy for now so that we still only have four connections to that little roundabout and not, you know, five. We don't need five right now. Now, in saying that, we do have what is essentially a very major road right here. So on that road, I'm going to go ahead and build our medical center. And we might do a little bit of death care somewhere nearby as well. Probably not too close to the medical center. It's a little bit, you know, morbid. But what I'd like to do is actually use this pedestrian street and say that I want to do, let's see, something a bit like this. I like to put my service buildings on pedestrian streets simply because there's just something about it that I think looks cool. So the medical center can go here. We can obviously go ahead and upgrade it, which is pretty cool. We can get an ambulance depot on there, which is going to give us more ambulances. We can get an extension wing, which could go here. It can go at the back. It can go back here as well. So you can really go ahead and extend your uh, your medical centers if you really want to. But we're going to hold off on that for the time being. The reason I wanted to give this its own little space really is because what I can do is I can come in here with some paths I'm just going to surround the space like this. I'm going to run the path straight through to here. And this is just going to be a little little park space. It's going to be a little something something where we can do some detailing and make this look like it just has its own little own little chunk of land. Right. It's a little medical center. You know, maybe they want to, um, I don't know, have uh, have some space to relax in the uh, in the back there. Let me have a look at my landfill site because this guy I need to be careful with. I need to not put this thing right next to all of my water. So I'm going to put it right here. And what I'm going to do is bring a little section of road just back like this. We'll go for about 224. I think we can get away with that. It's essentially turning a city block into a landfill. It's not the most glamorous thing in the world, but it gives us pretty good capacity. And that's what we're looking for. So with that all done, the only thing we have to place at this point is going to be a cemetery. Now the cemetery is huge. It's absolutely enormous, but I love it. So I'm going to place this thing probably around here and it is such a good looking building. It really is such a good looking thing. You can go ahead and place things like a chapel back here, which I think looks pretty good. The chapel, by the way, is a small place of worship and it, it provides increased well-being. It is plus two well-being within 300 meters. We are probably going to have people living around this. So that is something that I'm probably going to place. It's 11,000 a month for better uh, well-being, so I think that's fair enough. And then you have mausoleums, a memorial tomb for a person of importance. The cemetery becomes a sightseeing attraction. Upkeep is 7,000 a month. Honestly, I am kind of here for it. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of here for it. I think we could do a little mausoleum, say, there. And I think we could do a little mausoleum, say, there. And we are now losing $5,000 an hour, but we'll probably be... <laughs> We'll probably be okay. It's uh, it's probably not the end of the world. Uh, the last thing I want to do before we go ahead and start placing some zoning, though, is I want to start putting some paths in here. Now, paths can snap to the sides of buildings, which is really, really useful. So I'm going to have them do that the entire way around the cemetery. What I think I'm going to do, actually, is bring some two-lane roads right back here. So we're going to go right up to here. We're going to do exactly the same thing on this side as well. I don't know how well these are necessarily going to line up. They might not line up all that well, but it's OK. And then what we can do is bring a little section of road maybe right across here. And again, they don't line up perfectly, but it's OK. And I suppose at this point, I suppose everything on the inside of this road is going to be considered part of the cemetery and then everything on the outside is going to be zoned. So very quickly, let me go ahead and put some paths in here. Oh man, it kind of looks spidery and I don't know that I like that, but it's going to be laid out a bit like this. A lot of these paths honestly aren't going to do too much. Not too many people are going to use them, but it does make the cemetery itself seem a little bit bigger. I've also cleared out a lot, well, all of the trees just so that we have a bit of space to do some detailing in there. And I realized that I talked about development points and I haven't actually showed you what development points are. 
Now, we can get a columbarium, which is a set of walls for storing the cremated remains of the deceased. In order to get a columbarium, we need to have milestone one, which we are, we're a tiny village, but we also need crematoriums. That's where the development panel comes in. You'll notice in the bottom right, we have one development point. If I go into health and death care, I can spend a development point to get a crematorium, which is pretty cool, but I'm not going to do that because I'll be honest, I kind of want roundabouts. I also kind of want advanced road services. And obviously at some point we need to push for transportation, which is milestone four, so that we can get ourselves trains. But for now, I'm gonna say advanced road services is what I want. And advanced road services are pretty cool because I can go in here and I can say that I want this road, for example, to have grass along it, which I think, I think it probably should, to be honest with you. So we'll do some grass along here. That's kind of what we're going for there. And I think that's gonna be fantastic for our cemetery. And like I said, we can put some buildings around it. We have a lot of demand for buildings right now. So actually, let's use this EU medium density row housing as our first batch of zoning. So I'm going to say we're going to start right here. We'll fill in all of this part. We will fill in all of, let's see, up to about there as well. And we are going to have need for EU low density housing. That is going to be the main thing that they want. So I'm going to fill in a lot of this space with low density housing. I don't necessarily want people living right next to the medical center. So we'll leave that be for now. We'll do these tiles and I'm going to do a chunk of this tile as well. And we can probably do something like this as well. In fact, I'm probably going to try and surround the medical center with commercial zoning. I might, I might actually fill in these spaces. I think that's probably for the best. So this is going to be a lot of commercial zoning to start with. It's arguably, well, factually, it's about the same amount of zoning as we have uh, for residential. So we'll do a little bit more residential in here as well. And that should be fine for now. So let's get ourselves some industrial zoning just before we forget to do it. And what we'll do is just use the uh, use the bucket tool down here. Use the fill tool to just fill in a bunch of this space. So all of, let's see, up to about there is going to be industrial. So that's all going to start filling in nice and quickly. We have a lot of these guys starting to build their houses as well. We have all of this commercial over here starting to come together. And if we speed things up a little bit, we should start to see a bunch of these houses fill in as well. Oh, would you look at these? These European row houses are absolutely beautiful. I love how these look. I love wall-to-wall -wall buildings and in city skylines. And you know what I also love? I love placing thousands upon thousands of bushes by hand because I just thought the space needed it. And you know what? It looks pretty good. I, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. This is the kind of detailing that I wanted for this space. I think it looks fantastic. And I decided to do something similar over here as well, obviously without the thousands of bushes, but we now have like a little park space behind the medical clinic. We have some paths in front of it and some spruce trees as well. So I guess let's go ahead and wait for this entire space to build. Let's also go ahead and start looking at what we can build in this space as well. And let's also start dealing with a little bit of industrial demand that we have. So in dealing with that, we'll just get ourselves another little bit of road right here doesn't have to be anything too crazy or too fancy. Can I get a little road through here? I absolutely can. So we're going to go right up to there and we're just going to say that that space is going to be full of industrial zoning just to deal with that little bit of demand. And you know what? While we're waiting, let's have a look at the city economy. The budget right now is not great. We are losing $68,000 every month. We don't have taxation yet. But there it is. We were very close to milestone two. We are now a small village. That gives us another $700,000. That gives us two development points and four expansion permits. So let's go ahead and have a look and see what we can get. We have education now. We could go and get something like an incineration plant or recycling center if we wanted to. We could look at a crematorium. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to look into... Ooh, 
I'm torn. We could look into bigger roundabouts. We could look into parking areas. I'm thinking I kind of want parking areas because cars do need parking spaces and areas of high activity can benefit from dedicated parking areas. And if there's one thing you know about me, it's that I do love a good parking lot in cities skylines. And we do have space here where we could get one. Unfortunately, we can't get the larger one. It is just a little bit too large for the space. I could probably shuffle these roads over a little bit and fix that though, but I don't think I'm going to be so inclined. I think what we'll do is just apply the idea of kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Let's do a small parking lot right in here. Let's turn off the overlay so we can get a better idea of what it looks like. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it right here and I'm going to build another one right here. And I think in this case, I'm going to use these spruce trees and I'm going to get them as close together as I possibly can. OK, so I had to swap the trees out for popular trees. They are a little bit smaller with a bit of a smaller footprint because I think things are a little bit asymmetrical here. But I also took the opportunity to put some bushes around this square, put some uh, oak trees in there as well. And now, given the massive amounts of demand that we have for everything, Let's go ahead and get a few extra roads into this space. I think this will be fine for now, just not connecting this road down to this guy. I'll probably push it through eventually anyway, but I, like I said, want to deal with some of the demand that we have. So let's do some commercial zoning right here and let's do a little bit of commercial zoning right here. And I guess we're going to do a little bit of commercial zoning sort of along here as well, just to get that demand gone and get it dealt with. We could do some across from the cemetery as well. I might do that at some point, but we really don't have that much demand. I mean, it's pretty much gone with just, what, three new shops? Oh no, well, a few, a few, a few new shops and it's gone, but that's fine. That's what we want. And honestly, industry being industry, I'm just gonna come in here and fill a bunch of this space with just this. It's just gonna be grids and stuff like that because Again, a lot of this will probably get moved eventually. It's very, very close to where what is essentially the middle of my town happens to be, and I don't want it to be here forever, but it's okay for now. We also have, again, a whole bunch of commercial demand and a whole bunch of residential demand. So I don't know if I will put a school in this space. I don't know if that would be a great idea. What is probably a good idea, though, is having a look at my economy, going to taxation and bringing these numbers up to like 12%. I'm pretty sure I can go higher. I'm almost certain that I've read in a couple of places that you can go higher than that and your people don't really mind. I'm almost sure that you can, you know, offset the taxes by making them just really happy. I'm sure it was covered in a dev diary at one point, but here's a little secret for you. At the time I'm recording this video, I haven't watched any of the dev diaries. And that's something I do with a lot of games, man. I like to go into games relatively blind, kind of get hands on a little bit, get an idea of what it's about and then go watch the dev diaries. So I'm going to have a, a movie marathon when I'm done with City Skylines 2 today. Let me tell you that. It's going to be a good time. Oh, and look at this. We have Milestone 3. We are a large village. We just got $800,000, three development points, and five expansion permits, which is huge. We have fire coverage. We have policing. The next one at Grand Village is when we get transportation. So I'm not going to go too crazy. I might save my expansion points so that we can go ahead and get trains. I mean, admittedly, trains are one development point, so we could do trams as well. We could do both if we wanted to. I guess we probably can spend some of these then since trains are just the one. Roundabouts, larger roundabouts might be a really good idea. We haven't played with those yet, so let's grab those. I'm not going to touch highways right now. I don't think we're going to need large roads, and I don't think we need too much in there either. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to want to build some education. That's for sure. But I also want to play around with some zoning because we have specialized industry now. And this is why I've been saving my expansion points. I actually need that overlay uh, enabled. So let me just go and get that overlay again. Uh, this is fertile land. And if I use that fertile land, I can get some farms, which is kind of exciting. We can also do stone mining way up here, which admittedly, I probably do have the tiles to go ahead and do that. So I might do a little bit of stone mining. Let's uh, let me just have one last little look at where the fertile land is. There's fertile land here. Oh, I could do both. I could do both if I get that land. All right. Let me get those tiles, man. 
Uh, I need these ones. That is five. I need this one, this one, this one. That's eight. And I need... I want to say that one. I want to say that one. And that's going to let me do... Oh, that's going to let me do so much. That's going to be amazing. Here's the thing. Industry like that is is kind of profitable, man. It's, it's pretty good to have. So <laughs> I'm actually really excited about this. But... We need to we need uh, need to do education, and then we need to do that industry. And so I think this is probably gonna be how the elementary school goes. What are you guys all complaining about right now? High rent. They're not happy about the rent being so high. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll bring their tax down to 11% on residential. That'll hopefully cheer them up a little bit. And then for the elementary school. We have some things we can do. We can get a children's clinic on here. It's 10,000 per month, but it is plus 5% health for students. And it does give us a cool looking building. So I'm going to put that right back there. We can also get an extension wing, which is 10,000 a month. It increases student capacity by 500. We also have playgrounds, which is plus 10% well-being within 300 meters and plus 5% well-being for students. So I think we will do maybe two of those something a little bit like that and i could probably i could do this same with the extension honestly making this a bigger building even though it is expensive it's ten thousand a month i think i'm gonna do it just to again fill in the space and there we go i think this is perfectly fine we have a bunch of medium parking lots we do have a little bit of commercial zoning right next to the school as well but something i am gonna do is i'm gonna go in here and say that I think we want to do either grass or wide sidewalks on these roads. I don't necessarily want people parking on them. And so let's just go ahead and say we want trees the entire way down here. They are going to take a little while to grow, like I've already said, but that's all right. I think it just looks the part. I think it just looks better. Now, we need to build a fire station and we need to build a police station. And I need to keep this video at 30 minutes or less. So I think in here is where I'm going to go for the uh, the fire station. And I'm going to put it right about, let's say right about there. And then behind it, I'm hoping, can I do this? I can. The police station fits perfectly. So it's going to live right back there. And that's just a little service square. Now, both these guys can be upgraded. We can extend the garage and the police station. It doesn't take up any more space. Fire station, same story. We can extend that as well. Oh, you know what I could do with this square? I could do some medium density housing and get like a little apartment building in there. I don't know if we're going to get a second one built right in that space, but I think that's kind of the perfect. Oh, we absolutely are. That's like the perfect little spot for some apartments. That's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And we've got milestone four. We've just been given a million dollars. We have four development points, six expansion things. Let's have a look at the progression panel. Let's go into public transport. Let me get myself a train. Yes, please don't mind if I do. We also have need for offices now. We have need for high density residential zoning, which is kind of a big deal. And we have an increase in demand for uh, the medium density zoning as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way across here and I'm going to say that this is all going to be a bunch of row houses. Now, here's a little trick with the row houses I've noticed. If I zone it like this, there's a good chance the row houses will be built on these side roads. So what I like to do is this right here. I leave the gaps until they start building. And then if I place this, they start building on the road that I want them to be on. I'm kind of looking at this space here and thinking that some offices along the train tracks would be good. But I do also want to get my train tracks in there. And if we go to trains, we have a few, <laughs> we have a few requirements. We need this for one which is the rail yard. A large complex used for storing, sorting, and maintenance of trains can be upgraded. And then we need the actual train station. So this guy is massive. It is absolutely massive. I don't know... I don't know that putting it here is going to work long term, but we're going to find out together is what we're going to do. So it lives right there. And it's a pretty cool looking building. What can I upgrade you with? So I can do extra tracks which is pretty cool. I can just sort of stack them out there. We can do a maintenance hall. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's really cool. Maintenance hall, dedicated facilities that make train maintenance faster. 34,000 34, a month, I think will pass. And I think what I'm going to do, get rid of the tracks. Give me my train station. I want it right there because it's perfectly at the end of the main road into town. Oh, <laughs> I'm so keen right now. 
I am so, so excited right now. So extra platforms look so good. I don't need them, but they look really good. Station services is going to include shops, restaurants, and kiosks for passenger convenience. Increases the attractiveness of the station and the services pay rent. 16000 a month. I am here for it. We are doing that. Absolutely doing that. I love a train station that has a good little shop. And look at that. We have a passenger train coming in. I don't know if it's going to stop. I'm pretty sure it's just going straight through, but that's a really good looking train. Now, what I've also done is I've gone ahead and put some office zoning down here. We've got some shops next to the station as well. So that should be enough to deal with all of that demand. And it absolutely is. And so with a bunch of stops placed and a line now completed, we should be able to see a bunch of buses coming out of the depot down here. Any second there we go. Look at that. That is exactly what we want to see. I can also change those buses out for electric buses. It's going to be 29,000 a month for the upkeep on that. But honestly, we're kind of going with like a European vibe. I feel like I see electric buses a lot in Europe, so I'm going to do it. It is expensive, but we're going to go for the electric buses. I don't know if they get swapped out automatically. So what I might need to do is go and have a little bit of a look at bus line one. And yeah, electric bus is what we're going to swap out for. Also, we've had a traffic accident here, but it's only this one car that seems to have come off the road and there's really not much traffic on the way into the city. So I don't know, buddy, that might be a you problem. That might be more of an ish you than an ish me. I'll be honest with you. I hate to say it, man. I do, but that seems like his problem and very much not mine. Oh, I am an idiot. It turns out that the best thing you can do and the way you make the regional lines work is you actually need to connect them. So we're going to have a line going out to Alber Booty, Alber Buddy. We're also going to have a line that goes this way to Penrith and we complete the line right about there. And that should mean that we do have passenger trains. We have passenger trains. That's so good. That's so good. I'm so excited about that. You guys are still complaining. You guys are still abandoning. What's going on? I'm assuming it's crime right. No, poor education services. I find that hard to believe. Although they are also complaining about a lack of entertainment. So let's do a large playground there. Let's do a dog park right there. And that should make people a little bit happier. They've now got a playground in the neighborhood. They got a dog park in the neighborhood. And let me tell you something. I love a good dog park. I don't love this though. I don't love that these lots have been abandoned like that. That's uh, that's a bit of a problem. Let's turn off underground mode and get you guys bulldozed and hopefully rebuilt at some point. Now, here's an interesting little detail. I've just gone ahead and built another bus line that loops around this little neighborhood. And I love it. I absolutely do. By the way, we have 308 people currently using the buses per month. We have 271 using the trains. But here's the problem. As I built that bus line, as I placed this first stop right here, we leveled up to level five. We are now a tiny town. There's a problem with that. As it stands with this episode right here, I'm only allowed to show you up until level four and including level four. I can show you level four as well. I'm not allowed to show you anything from level five onwards until the next video. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to leave it there for today. I absolutely adore how this little town has come together. There is still some detailing to be done in here. There absolutely, absolutely is. There is still plenty of space that needs to be built. There is still a lot to do. In fact, that's the one thing I am going to allow myself to do is I'm going to fill in these spaces because it's just really annoying me that they're empty. I want these to be built. I want these to be built. We have the demand for it and damn it, I'm going to do it. I'm just getting these guys in here. That's all. I'm not nothing from nothing from tier five. It's just a little bit of zoning. I know we didn't get around to doing this industry. I know we're losing a little bit of money right now, but that is something that we can take a look at in the next episode. As it stands, I don't know when that episode's going to be, but there will be three, including this one. There will be three videos on City Skylines 2, just a bit like this, continuing with this city, continuing with Linden. And then when the game's out, we're going all in. We're going to go nuts. I don't know if we'll necessarily continue Linden. That will depend on what happens in the next two episodes. But I'm going to go watch about 13 weeks worth of dev diaries. I'm going to have a great time. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. 
Bye-bye.